Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a tutorial that accompanies our nautical baby blanket, nautical stripes I think I called it, and um, it's just a variation of the sedge stitch that I will teach you, actually, I actually have it upside down here, but in this tutorial I want to show you how I do the half double crochet um, back loop only kind of a ribbed border too. So that's what this tutorial will be for. You can find the pattern on our website and we'll, if you're just seeing this on YouTube and you can find that link down in the descriptions. All right, let's get started. So the yarn that I used for the blanket is Burnat Softy Baby. You can use any yarn. This is a three lightweight acrylic and I am using a G hook, which is a, sorry, over here, which is a four millimeter hook. So this is baby yarn. Um, and to start the pattern, you will need any multiple of the number three. So I have 18 chains here on my hook. You will start in the second chain from the hook with a single crochet. Then you'll chain one and work a double crochet right into the same stitch. So that's kind of our combination for this. Single crochet, chain, double crochet. Now skip two stitches and now let's work that combo again. Single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And work the same thing again by skipping two chains. Start with your single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now work this across the row until you have one chain left. So here we are. I worked in the second to the last chain, my little combo, and now I have one chain left. And in that chain, just work one single crochet. Then chain one and turn. And now into that very um, first single crochet, you know, the last one that you just worked, so the very first stitch right there. Let's start with our combo right away. Single crochet, chain, double crochet. Now we will skip over two stitches, so the same, same idea. Come over here and find that single crochet and work your single crochet, chain, double crochet. Now continue that across the row and I'll show you what to do at the end of the row. All right, so here's the last single crochet and then here's this group. Now you don't need to work a whole combo over here. We're essentially going to end the row in the same way that we just did the first row. You'll just need to work one single crochet into the top of that single crochet from the row below. And that's how you'll end the row. So that last section kind of leans over the, that bottom section and you're done. So if you can keep that in mind, your um, the sides of your blanket will always sit, stay straight. So you start the row by working into that single crochet but you end the row with just one single crochet. So you start the row with a combo and then end the row with just one single crochet. Okay, so I am going to show you how to add in a new color at the end of this row. So why don't you continue to work across if you are doing this with me and let's add some color. 
So here I am at the end of the row. I can see that I have, you know, my last three stitches. I'll skip over two and work just one single crochet, but instead of completing the stitch, you all just did the first step. I will go ahead and leave that white off, grab my teal color, simply lay it over the hook and pull it through. That's how you change colors in crochet, pretty standard. I like to, you know, kind of pull that down, pull it tight. Now we will just continue with the same pattern. I chained one and turned, and in that very first stitch, I will start with my single crochet, my chain one, and then double crochet. All right, I'll work a few rows of this, and um, then let's get to showing you how to put one round of single crochet around your blanket. Now before you want to put your border on you are going to want to weave in your ends and if you've never seen this before I'm using a blunt tip needle large eye and you just work your ends in. Um, there's no wrong way to do this or just weave them in and out of the stitches to hide that tail. Work it back and forth um, several times and then you'll want to just clip that tail short. Since this is just a little swatch, I'm not going to do it as if it's the real blanket. I won't do it as many times, but then you'll just clip that tail off and it's hidden and you're ready to go. So now we have just a little sample. And what I like to do is sometimes I still will just, I won't cut off the white since I'm going to be edging it in white. Um, but if you have cut off and wo woven your end, you can just pull up a loop and start. But anyway, I will chain one and turn just like I was going to continue to the next row. Now with this stitch, we want to work a single crochet um, in the first two stitches and then I skip where that chain remember in our our um, little pattern it was single crochet chain double crochet I don't work into that single crochet I just kind of skip it and just work into the single crochets and the double crochets and then skip over that chain that seemed to be about right now, if you find that it's it's pulling too much for you, you know, go ahead and work, um, work every now and then into that chain. The most important thing about a border that I have found is to just keep your stitches as even as possible. There is no perfect way other than it just takes a lot of patience and kind of, you know, your inner crochet artist. It's what I said in the blog post. It's like just get a feel for um, the evenness of your stitches. Okay, so this is that last single crochet of the row, and I will work three single crochets into this to get myself around the corner. So one, two, and three, I'm working them all into the same spot. And now down the sides of the blanket, do your best to work one per row. So it's like there's kind of a large hole and then a small hole for you to work into. And that seemed to keep it pretty even for me. So one per end of the row, working on down. And then of course we'll do three single crochets when we get to that next border, I mean corner, and then work as evenly as possible across the bottom. And I will meet you back where we join the rounds and then I'll show you how to do the half back loop half double crochet ribbed border. Okay, I just worked one of my last stitches in the corner and I kind of consider that very first single crochet that we worked as um, one of the first stitch in the corner so I generally just work two at that last corner count that one as my third and call it good so I will slip stitch to this 
single crochet, the very first one that we made in the round, just like that. And let's start working the border. So what you'll do is chain 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That gives you a pretty good width. This number is completely up to you. You can make your border even wider if you want or shorter. Just pick a number and, and stick with it. So basically our number actually though will be eight. We chained out 10, but we're going to make eight half double crochets back to the border. So work one half double crochet into each one of those chains and we should have eight before we get back to the, the edge of the blanket. Okay, here's our eighth one. It's right there and it's always good to count just in case you're not sure can be tricky. Count those posts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, our blanket's going to line up like that. Now in the next chain, slip stitch. Now slip stitch one more time. Okay, and kind of turn the work towards you. I've learned is a little bit easier. I used to turn it the other way, but this is a little bit easier to grab. This, you want to yarn over. Now you're going to work into the back loop of the eighth one that we made. Try not to get confused with the slip stitch that we did. Look for the V's that face you. That's your first stitch. Just work into the back loop now. Work. the half double crochet into the back loop and when we get to that eighth one instead of working in the back loop i have found that it makes an, a prettier finish if you just work under both loops but that's just only when you get to the end when you're out here on this outer edge make sure you can see get my hands out of the way so here we go here's number seven now on this eighth one, just go ahead and work underneath both the loops, just like a regular half double crochet. Okay, still chain two, turn your work back. Now the same thing, just on this very first stitch, let's work underneath those two loops. It'll give you a nice edge out here on the edge of your blanket and then work the back loop. Okay, when you get, after you work these eight back down, slip stitch over two times. Continue working back and forth and then I'll show you how to work the corners that we're gonna fan out around the corners. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I mean. I've already, this is my other sample. So you're working, working, and then we're going to create this fan that gets us around the corner. So how we're going to do that is we've been working, slip stitching over two times, and here I am working back down the row. Now, this is the three single crochets that I worked around the corner. So instead of slip stitching over two times, we will only slip stitch once into the very first stitch of the corner. So I'll work down and I'll just slip stitch into that first one and then turn and start working back up. So here's the first single crochet that made up the corner. I just slip stitch once and go ahead and turn and start working my way back up. Okay, so now I'm going to work back. I'll slip stitch over to the corner and work out and then I'll slip stitch into the corner again and I will be doing that three times. 
So I've slip stitched once into that very corner spot, worked out, I'm coming back. I'm slip stitching again into the same middle of the three single crochets that we made from the row below. I'm turning my work. I'll work out and in again and slip stitch again for three times into the middle single crochet. That's how we'll really get that, this border to fan around the corner. Here's what it looks like just before I'm gonna slip stitch again for the third time into the corner. Turn my work, yarn over, work up for the last time and now I'll st slip stitch just once into that next stitch and hopefully that's gotten me around the corner if not maybe you'll need to slip stitch just once for one more stitch um you know lay your work out and see see how how you've done I'm still working underneath the two loops here at the end chaining two and turning. And I think that's, it's gonna get me around the corner. So it should kind of look like this when you've done the three, cause then you'll come back and do one and then it should start evening out and you'll work all the way around. Okay, I'll, I'll just um, keep working and then I'll show you how to um, join the rounds over here with your tapestry needle. So here I am at the very last corner and in that last stitch is where I slip stitch three times. So it kind of looks like it overlaps just a bit. You can decide though if you want to make that last row clear out to the edge. You can definitely stop um, closer to the blanket if, if it looks like it's overlapping too much. So I'm going to get my little tapestry needle here and how I will close up this border like that is I will just simply um, sew the two sides together. Make sure you can see this. And I like to just go around and around, kind of like underneath the two chains and just close it up just like that. And then I'll weave in the end and then my blanket is finished. Okay, so another, a couple tips before I go. If you have to slip stitch more than two times to make this even, go for it. If you have to slip stitch only once, this is the hardest part about, you know, a border. You just really need to estimate because the goal is to just make it lay flat. And of course, this looks a little funny because it's a little, um, just a swatch, but you'll have your big blanket and then you'll have this beautiful border that goes around it. So good luck with your project. I hope it turns out well. This is um, such a cute, cute, cute blanket, and I love this stitch. So thank you for coming by, and of course, again, look in the descriptions on YouTube for a link to the pattern, and you can get all the written instructions there. Okay, thank you. You have a nice day.